evening, everybody, and welcome to Benham Field on the campus of Vandegut High School in Austin, Texas. My name is Merle Bertrand, coming to you live tonight as the Vandegut Pipers get ready to open their 2023 District 25-6A campaign against the Westwood Warriors. Both of these teams come in at a nice district opener on the heels of back-to-back -back tournament weekends. The Warriors under head coach Casey Carter come in as the defending district champions, going 25-8 and and reaching the area round of the playoffs last season. Westwood is off to a 7-3 season thus far in 2023. The Vipers and the second year head coach Jared Hickel returned to the playoffs last year as the number four seed in the district, finishing with a 16-14 mark and falling to Lake Travis in the bi-district playoffs. Vandegut took four out of five games in last weekend's Kamal IST tournament and bring a 6-4 mark into tonight's district opener. That sets the table here. We'll take a real quick break and make sure that we're all settled in. When we come back, we'll hear from Vipers head coach Gerald Hickel talking about the season so far and setting the table for tonight's game versus the Westwood Warriors. You're watching the Jones and Sprouse broadcast of Vandegut Vipers baseball on Vipe Live. Well, pleased to be joined for the first time in the 2023 season by the head coach of the Vatican Vipers, Coach Jared Hickel. And uh, first of all, Coach, good, great to see you again. We've uh, done a couple of nine district games, but uh, tonight, the first time, it really starts to count. Your thoughts on how things are going so far? Now, this season so far, we're playing some pretty good baseball. Our guys are coming together as a team and uh, beat some really good teams and then found out a little bit about ourselves uh, over the last couple of weekends. Yeah, about what, four out of five, I think, uh, last week. And I noticed the bats kind of came alive, a lot of double-digit scores. That was one of the concerns of yours. In the first round of the uh, the preseason tournament, so uh, how how's that looking? Are the bats coming along? Is it a consistent kind of thing? You know, I really think the guys are stacking together quality at bats, and you know that's one of the things we focus on. And, and if they continue to do that, I, I don't see why we can't continue to put barrel to baseball and and, and putting some some runs up. Well, one of the biggest things that you try to accomplish in those tournaments is finding who your guys are, finding your lineups. How set are you right now? Is it still a work in progress, or are some questions starting to get answered a little bit? And I truly, I truly believe in high school baseball that it's never really set. There's so many <laughs> right. variables in, in high school mm -hmm. baseball, and we always have guys that, you know, they end up trending up, and guys that say, you know what, Coach, take a look at me, and I'm the guy now. And right. so I don't ever want to close my mind off to, to those kind of guys who end up trending up as the season goes. And to that point, that's one of the things things I noticed looking at the box scores is that different guys contributed in each one of those games. That's got to make you feel good to know that you've got that kind of depth that you can fall back on. Yeah, not just depth, but also the, the team camaraderie because when the next guy goes in the game, we're, our guys in the dugout are really cheering them on and uh, I'm really proud of the guys for that so far. And last question for you. Westwood has been kind of a pain in the butt the past couple of years. They've got to be considered one of the favorites. I think you guys have to be in the mix. Uh, talk about this Westwood team and what you guys have to do tonight. You know, the Westwood team, they have some really talented players coming back. Uh, they had a really talented team last year, and they just found ways to win. And I, I guarantee you that Carter over there has got them going and, and believing that they can win no matter what happens. And that's the really the biggest challenge going against Westwood is no matter what happens in the game, they're never out of it. Right. So we have to play our game, you know, be consistent, pound the zone, keep doing quality ABs, and give us our, ourselves a chance to win. Well, Coach, looking forward to it. Uh, we got this one tonight. And then you got that tournament game coming, tournament coming up this weekend. Is that a good thing or a bad thing after getting one district game in? Not that you got a choice in the matter, but what, what are your thoughts on that? With the weather the way it is right now, baseball is not a bad thing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> well, thanks, Coach. Good luck tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Darrell. Thank you kind of for joining us here on the pregame show. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching the Spoons and Draws for Vatican Pipers Baseball on the Vipe Live Network.
playing center field, number three, Peyton Griff. Batting seven, playing shortstop, number 12, Carter Hubbard. Batting eight, playing third, number 20, Austin Spielers. Batting ninth, playing right field, number 17, Cole Hussein. Welcome back to Venom Field. Merle Bertrand here. Five is getting ready to open up the District 25-6A schedule against the Westwood Warriors. Give you a quick peek here at how the teams have been doing in non-district thus far. You can see right there the Vipers 6-4, Westwood 7-3 right above them. Those games are important for their own reasons, but they don't count in the district standings. And after tonight, half the district will remain undefeated. The other half will have to sit around for another week and wait to try to get their first win of the season. We'll give the lineups again for the Westwood Warriors. It'll be Jackson Gould of the right fielder leading it off. Drew Holland at second base batting second. Ridge Morgan, the starting pitcher, batting third. Caleb Moore at center field batting cleanup. John Ramsey at third, uh, shortstop batting fifth. Lane Wood at left field batting sixth. Michael Davis behind the plate batting seventh. And Jake Jones at the eighth for the first baseman. Antonio Martinez batting eighth. Luke Brandis, the third baseman, batting ninth for Coach Casey Carter's Westwood Warriors. The Viper defense looks like this. Gavin Shaddox, Peyton Grimm, and Cole Wiss in the outfield left to right. Austin Spielis, Carter Hubbard, Hudson Lilly, and Indy Connor the infield third to first. Alan Jordan behind the plate. That's an interesting start. And uh, the starting pitcher tonight, Connor Freeman, unofficially by my count making his third appearance. A record of 2-0 and with nine innings pitched thus far in the young season. Given up seven hits, two runs. Both of those are earned. He struck out eight, walked four, and has a 1.56 ERA. All stats unofficial and tabulated by yours truly. So here we go. Merle Bertrand here, Rosie Bega, RQA, back at the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as the Living Room Sofa, making sure that we're staying on the air and sounding good. And you and Holmes get ready to open up district play. Jackson Gould is stepping in from the left side against Connor Freeman. And we are underway from Vanderbilt High School. And the pitch is fouled down the left field line for strike one. Beautiful night for baseball. About 78 degrees at first pitch. Oh, one pitch. Just misses outside. Ball one, one ball, one strike. One 
One one pitch. High inside, ball two. It's dropped down a little bit to 74 degrees. A bit of a slight breeze blowing from right to left. One of the rare times it's not windy out here at the ballpark. Two one pitch. Scooper to the left side and out in the left field for a base hit. Just got past the diving off to Spielis and Gould is aboard with a leadoff single. That'll bring up the second baseman, Drew Hallad. Three twenty-three to the left field foul pole. Three twenty-five to the right field foul pole. Three eighty to dead away center field. It's a big ballpark and it plays even bigger. All grass and dirt, the way God meant baseball to be played. And Hallett's up to bat with a runner at first. Pitch a little high and inside, ball one. Up a little high, 2-0. Oh. All the pitches thus far from Premier have been a little bit high. Two-0 -oh pitch. That was in it for a good strike. Two balls and one strike to Hallett. Toss over to first, then the runner back. MD Connor holding the runner at first. Spiel is playing in a little bit at third base. Haven't seen a sign of a bunt yet. There's a 2 1 pitch, and that's a beautiful pitch there for a called strike. And the count 2 and 2 now to Hallett. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a missed strike three and a pitch up at the eyes for out number one. One away, let him bring up the pitcher, Ridge Morgan. So one out, Gula remains at first. Ooh, and that one plunked him. Curveball broke inside, hit him at about the hip, and runners at first and second with one away. And that'll bring up Caleb Moore, the center fielder. Westwood sitting in a courtesy runner for the pitcher, He's trying to get a good look at the number if I can. I like these uniforms, but it's not easy. I think it's number five. That can't be right because he's in the lineup. I'll check that for you here. Runners at first and second with one away. Showing bunt and bunt through it. Strike one. Snap. Ooh, almost, almost had a snap throw down to second base. But the runner gets back. Pitch. Might be number three. That would No, he's a bat. Just can't read that burnt orange on the dark gray. Doesn't stand out very well. Even through binoculars. So one pitch. Swing and a miss strike two. Well, if Connor Freeman strikes out the side, it won't matter. Time is called. Six, Luke Rupertus, I think is what it is. We're going to run our numbers eventually. I'm going to keep guessing, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. 
Lifted in the air to the right side. That's trouble if it's fair to slicing. And a diving catch made. Oh, couldn't hang on to it. Now they got the runners kind of hung up. And everybody's going to be safe. Snap throw down to third. Now they got him hung up at home. And they're going to get him at home. That worked out pretty well. Now they play down to third. And they save the third. Now they got him at third. He beat the tag at third. We got a good call there. Westwood runs out of the inning. Holy cow. So Caleb Moore, the sinking quail to right field. Right fielder, Cole Wilson, go for it. Got a glove on it. Couldn't hang on to it. He fired over to second. Got the runner hung up between first and second. That runner made it back. But Gould had tried to score from third base, and he was thrown out at home. So that was a 9-2, a 9-4, two put out at home for out number two. And then 4-5 to get Ridgemore and uh, Rupertus over at third base. How about that? So it was a single in the inning, no runs, two hits, no errors. It'll be one runner left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the first inning, still scoreless. How is that for a crazy way to start district play? So the Vipers. As we catch our breath, we'll set up a line that looks like this. Gavin Shaddix, a left fielder, batting third, uh, first. Hudson Lilly, a second base, batting second. M.D. Connor over first base, batting third. Alan George behind the plate, batting cleanup. Connor Freeman, pitching and double hit, uh, de designated hitter tonight, batting fifth. Peyton Grimm in center field, batting sixth. Carter Hubbard, the shortstop, batting seventh. Austin Spiel is batting eighth. And Cole Wilson out in right field, batting ninth. So Shaddix, Lilly, Connor, Jordan Freeman, Grimm. Hubbard, Spielis, and Wisson, the batting order for Coach Gerald Hickles, batting at Vipers. Lane Wood, Kayla Moore, Jackson Gould of the outfield, left to right for Westwood. Luke Landis, John Ramsey, Drew Howland, and Antonio Martinez, the infield third to first. Michael Davis behind the plate, and Ridge Morgan, the starting pitcher for Westwood. So here is Gavin Shattuck to lead it off, batting 318 on the season. No home run, one RBI, four doubles, and a triple thus far on the season. That was a crazy play. And the first pitch in the call, strike one to Shattuck. Ground ball left side, short hop, kicked up in the air. Picked up bare hand, the throw to first, they're not gonna get him. See how they rule that one, I think that's gonna be ruled an error. And that'll bring up Hudson Lilly. Lilly stepping in, batting 346 on the season. No home runs, two RBI, two doubles and a triple. Toss over to first, runner back. Yes, that was ruled an error. Lily shows bunt, pulls the back pitch down low, ball one. Would have taken a really good play by Brandis anyway, because Shaddock says he would expect with the leadoff hitter has good speed. But the bobble was all that uh, all that Shaddock needed to beat it out. Ooh, and that one hits him. It rides high inside. The Vipers have something cooking here in the bottom of the first. And Aaron and hit batter, and that'll bring up MD Connor. Connor. Batting 345, no home runs, a team leading eight RBI on the season. He comes up here with runners in first and second, nobody out.
Curveball bends in there, but stays up a little high. Ball one. So Shaddix at second, Lily at first, both with good speed. That ball hit off the bat handle into right field. Pretty well tagged, but it's going to hang up. And tagging at second. Here comes the throw to third, and it is not going to be in time. Good speed by Gavin Shaddix and a good head first slide. Puts runners at first and third with one away. So one out now. Shaddix over at third base. Runners at the corners for Allen Jordan. And man, has he been ripping the baseball. 474 hitter. Comes up here with runners at the corners and one away. Swing and a miss strike one. No balls, one strike to Jordan. Pipe is trying to break out of top early. I got the runner picked off between first and second. Let's see if we can manufacture a run this way. They throw it home, and that's going to allow the runner to get back down to second. So a pickoff turned into a stolen base. As Shaddock did a good job coming down the line just enough to draw the throw home, and that allowed Lily the chance to scamper into second base. Not by design, I don't think, but it worked. Runners are second and third now. It takes away the force and the double play. Swing and a miss strike two to Jordan. He's behind on the count, 0-2. Connor Freeman on deck for Vandergrift. No balls, two strikes to Jordan. Foul out of play to the right side. Two pitch. Inside, one and two. One, two pitch. Ooh, that one been in there for a call strike three. Good pitch, and they do it, and there are two away. So to us now, that'll bring up Connor Freeman. Freeman stepping in, batting 333 on the season. No home runs, eight RBI. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike to Freeman. Trying to help his own cost here. Runners the second and third with two outs. Fouled it out of play in the count one and two. Big pitch coming up here. Vipers trying to break on top early here in the bottom of the first. 
One ball, two strikes to Freeman. Low inside, good block. The count goes to two and two. A lot of room behind home plate here at Benham Field. That ball gets back to the screen. Shaddix is more than likely going to score. Two-two pitch with two away. And time is called. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Shaddix at third, Lilly at second. Just a little low. First base is open, the count goes full. Peyton Grimm on deck. Big pitch here. Three and two the count to Freeman. Kyle back to the screen. We'll do it again. Ridge Morgan trying to pitch out of the jam. Connor Freeman trying to help his own cause. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch. Outside high ball four. The base of the loader for Peyton Grimm. Here's Grimm stepping in, batting 364 on the season. No home runs with five RBI and a couple of doubles. Michael Davis will go out and talk to Ridge Morgan. So the bases are full of vipers. An error hit batter. Second flies fly, move runners over to the corners with one away. Jordan struck out, Connor Freeman with the walk, and here comes Peyton Grimm to try to clean the plate. Pitch at the knees for call strike one. Oh, one pitch. Way outside, ball one. If absolutely nothing else, they're going deeper into the pitch count here for Ridge Morgan. One and one the count. High fly ball. Looks like it's going to hang up. And drifting to his left and making the catch out of left field is Caleb Moore. So the Vipers got to get a couple of base runners but can't do anything with them in the inning. No runs, no hits. One air, two runners left on base. And we will go to the top half of the second inning. Still no score here from Benham Field. We've got a break in the action. I want to thank our sponsors. Our Grand Slam sponsor, Jones and Sprost. The home run sponsor, Symbio. Wayne Weigel with State Farm. Austin Sports Medicine. Alicia Michaud Real Estate. And Silverton Custom Homes. Along with our double play sponsor, Sports Clips. Thank you to all those folks for making it possible for us to be here tonight. Tonight, marking our 670th Vipers cast overall on KMAX Sports Invite, dating back to 2009, our 178th Vipers baseball broadcast. And thanks to Vanderbilt Pusa Club President Jennifer Farrow and all the sponsors for making these broadcasts possible. So we go to the top of the second inning. Going to be five, six, and seven hitters due up here for Westwood. Email is open, by the way, Voice of the Vipers. That's all one word, plural. Voice of the Vipers at gmail.com. And they give a shout out. Let us know where you tune into the broadcast from. Give a shout out to your favorite player on either side. As John Ramsey will step in. That wound up being just a 13 pitch inning for Connor Freeman after Westwood. Kind of ran themselves out of the first inning. And the first pitch up, high ball one to Freeman. Two 
Left it up high again, 2-0. At the lettuce for a strike. Two balls and one strike to Ramsey, the shortstop for Westwood. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on that one, and the count goes two and two. Two two pitch. Wasting it outside, and the count goes full to Ramsey. Three balls, two strikes. Just missed outside, ball four, and it's a leadoff walk to Ramsey, and that'll bring up the left fielder, Lane Wood. So Freeman working from the stretch again. And that's a good pitch. Gets ahead of the hitter, strike one. That's key for him. Toss over to first. Oh, one pitch. Swung on, foul tip, strike two. So Freeman ahead, now 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes to the Warrior left fielder. Pitch up high, one and two. That was a pretty good move that time. That was close. Freeman's got a deceptive move. It's very casual, then all of a sudden it just snaps over there. And that was close. The one-two pitch. Little number off the bat handle. That's gonna be trouble. The runner had to hold. Freeman gets it, tossed it over the first, but I think he beat it. Yep, he did. Good speed there by Wood. That ball had a lot of English on it, so it's gonna be runners at first and second with nobody out. That'll bring up the catcher, Michael Davis, with nobody out and runners at first and second for Westwood. Freeman did all he could with it. Vipers playing in in anticipation of a bunt from Davis. Ramsey at second. Wood at first with nobody out here in the top of the second. Shows butt, butts it up in the air. Strike one. No balls and a strike to Davis. Bunts it up in the air again and it follows a back strike too.
So no, no balls, two strikes to Davis. Probably swinging away here. And pitch up a little high, ball one. One, two pitch, up high, ball two. Freeman digging in from the left side. Two balls, two strikes. Foul low ball, that hit him. So the base is gonna be loaded with nobody out. Second hit batter tonight. With Ramsey up to third, Wood up to second. Davis at first. We'll have a courtesy runner for the catcher. Davis as Jake Jones will step in. Owen Norrell, the runner at first base. So the Vipers in trouble here in the top of the second inning. Base is loaded, nobody out. Just trying to minimize the damage here. As Jones, the DH, steps in. Infield in on the fringe in the corners. Swing it away, and a good pitch there for call strike one. Just missed outside, 101 the count. Ramsey at third, Wood at second, Norrell running for Davis at first base. Pitch up high again, two and one. Two balls and a strike to Jones. Good pitch there, ground ball up the middle. They're gonna concede the run, go to second for one to throw to first. It is safe at first, beat it out. So an RBI fielder's choice eliminates Norrell running at second on the play. Ramsey comes in to make it a one to nothing. Westwood lead. Runners at the corners now with one away. As Luke Brandis steps in. So one nothing Westwood runners at the corner, still in danger here with just one out. Toss over to first, that was pretty good. They go! Looked like the umpire was gonna punch him out for a second and change his mind at the last second. First pitch is up high, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Now he shows bunt, pulls it back. The umpire says no when the count goes 2-0. Jones bunt again and bunts it right in front of the plate and they're gonna tag the runner home, they got him. Two unassisted. That was a nice play there by Alan Jordan because that ball had backspin on it. If he waits, it's gonna roll foul. He fielded it in fair play, got the runner coming home for out number two. So back to the top of the order we go. 
to Jackson Gula. Two outs now. Run is at first and second. Jones up to second. Brandis at first with two outs. And Gula will step in for the second time tonight. Pitch down low, ball one. Gula, one for one, reach on a single. And cut down at a home plate on that bizarre double play in the first inning. Pitch way up high, the count two and oh. Good pitch there, fouls it back to the screen, two and one. Three balls, one strike now to Gula. Swing and a miss, strike two. Connor Freeman. One pitch away from getting out of the inning with only the one run scoring. After three innings, Cedar Ridge leading McNeil two to nothing in another game tonight on Vipe. McNeil looks to be an approved ball club this year. They're hovering around the 500 mark. Three balls, two strikes with two away. Foul back to the screen, we'll do it again. Cedar Ridge just one and eight coming in. McNeil five and four, but right now it is three to two to nothing. Cedar Ridge over McNeil after three innings. That game being played over at Mavericks Field. Maynard hosting Stony Point and Round Rock hosting Vista Ridge. The other two games in district play tonight. Here's a three-two pitch. High inside ball four, and the inning stays alive. So base loaded again for Drew Hallett. Hallett 0 for 1, he struck out in the first inning. Second walk of the inning to go with the hit by pitch. So far, just the one run across the plate. Got to put out the fire right here as the pitch stays down low, ball one. There is activity in the Viper bullpen. Can't quite see who it is from here, but. Check the swing, the pitch up high, 2-0. Oh. Popped up in the count two and one. Two balls, one strike with two outs. Just a little high, three and one, no place to put Hallad. Three one pitch, low and away ball four, and that'll walk in walk run number two. The so base is still loaded now, two nothing in favor of Westwood. As Ridge Morgan set to set, come in and. Connor Freeman's going to come out of the game. Not his night tonight. Just one of those nights. Uh, 
And I believe that is Evan Farrow checking in. So Evan Farrow going to come in and try to put out the fire here. We'll get you his unofficial numbers, making his third appearance of the season. A record of 0-1. He's pitched seven innings, given up two hits, three runs, all three of them earned. He struck out 10 and walked three with an ERA of 3.00 on the young season. His job is to keep it a 2-0 ball game. Still plenty of time left, obviously. We're only in the second inning here. But don't want to fall behind by five or six. The bases are still loaded. Brandis is over at third base, school up to second, and Hallad at first base with two outs. All right, so here's Rich Morgan. He's the beneficiary of this, trying to help his own cause. Comes up with the bases still loaded, two outs in a two nothing ball game. First pitch from Farrell, just misses inside, ball one. Oh, and that one hits him. And that'll make it 3 nothing. So Brandis trots in with the third run of the ball game. And that'll bring up Caleb Moore. Now 3 nothing in favor of Westwood. And Rupert is back in to run for Morgan at first base. So Gula moves up to third, Hallett up to second. Rupert is running for Morgan at first base. Three runs in as Caleb Moore, the ninth batter, to come in. And that hits him. So back-to-back -back hit batter RBIs. And that'll bring up John Ramsey. He started this inning off with a walk. And MD County going to try to come in and settle down as pitcher. Westwood has scored four runs here in the inning on just one hit. Three walks and three hit batters. And hit another one. got another pitching change. We're going to take a break and be right back. You're watching the Jones and Sprouse broadcast of Vanity Vipers Baseball on Vipe Live.
All right, we'll welcome you back here to Benham Field. Some defensive changes. Austin Spiel is now coming in to pitch for the Vipers. Making his fourth appearance of the year, a record of 2 0. Pitched eight innings thus far in the season, giving up five hits, three runs, none of them earned. He struck out six and walked two, so he's got an ERA of 1.40, and it's also his birthday. So happy 18th birthday to Austin Spielis. I think I saw Cash Millar come into the ball game. I'm trying to see. Hudson Lilly probably moved over to third, and Cash Millar took his spot at second, would be my guess. All right, base is still loaded. Lane Wood will step in. Still two outs, <clears throat> five runs in for Westwood. And the first pitcher in Spiel is down low, ball one. Five runs into the inning on just one hit. That's the bad news. The good news is the Vipers still have six at-bats to get him back. Spielis has got to shut it down right here. Good pitch in there for a strike. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike to Lane Wood. Short flare in the right field and going to be caught by Cash Millar drifting out of the fringe to finally put out the fire. But a tough inning for the Vipers as Westwood sends 11 batters to the plate. They score five of them on just the one hit. No errors. Three runners left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the second inning. Let's reset this baseball game. 5 nothing. Westwood on top. It is a full moon tonight, and we've already seen some goofy stuff. All right, so for the Vipers here in the bottom of the second inning, it is 7-8 and 9. Hitters do up. Carter Hubbard, Austin Spielis, and now Cole Wisson. And hopefully a few more as they begin to try to chip into a 5-0 deficit here early. Back in the bottom of the first inning, the Vipers managed to get two runners aboard with nobody out. Couldn't do anything with them. We'll see what they can do against young Mr. Morgan here in the bottom half of the second inning. Now, Freeman was listed as the D8, so he can probably stay in the batting order. I'm sure that's what Coach Schickel is talking about to the home plate umpire right now, making sure that he's aware of that. As Carter Hubbard steps in, batting 333 on the season. No home runs for RBI. And the first pitch in there, call strike one to Hubbard.
Ball one pitch. Misses outside, ball one. One ball, one strike to the Viper leadoff hitter. That one slid back in across the inside corner for strike one and two. One, two pitch. Swung on, fall back to the screen. The count remains one and two to Hubbard. One, two pitch. Way outside, two and two. Two, two pitch. Slap left side, takes a friendly hop for the shortstop and the throw is high, but able to get back down to the back in time was Antonio Martinez. So Ramsey to Martinez with a 6-3 put out, one away. And that'll bring up Austin Spielis with one out and the base is empty. Spielis batting 421 of the season, no home runs with two RBI, a couple of doubles thus far. And that pitch in there for a call strike one. Good cut there, but it takes a high friendly hop. And that'll be a 4-3 put out, one hop to him. Nice job there by Martinez, who's been uh, tried over there at first base. That's a little bit short. But the putout made just the same. Two away bases empty for Cole Wisson. As Cole was saying, I've been saying it wrong, so my apologies. He comes in batting 318 on the season with five RBI. Two outs, bases empty here in the Viper second. And that one goes over his head, high ball one. Down low ball two. Two balls, no strikes. We'll say with that great effort in the first inning, almost came up with that sinking fly ball. Didn't give up on the play. Recovered, kept it in front of him. Misses, oh boy. That was way outside, but the umpire calls it a strike and the count two and one. Down low, ball three. Top of the third inning, Bowie over Anderson, two to nothing. Cedar Ridge has increased their lead now to eight to nothing over McNeil. At the knees for call strike, three and two. We've also got Dripping Springs and Austin High tonight on the network. Actually two broadcasts there, because we broadcast for both schools. Three, two pitch, top foul up the third base side. And the count remains full to Wissane. Three-two pitch on its way. Slapped to the left side, out, knocked down by the shortstop, but he couldn't recover. That would have been good for a single anyway. Nice effort by John Ramsey to get a glove on it, but Wasane beats it out for an infield single. Viper's first hit of the ball game, and back to the top of the order we go to Gavin Shaddix. Two outs runner at first. Shaddix reached out an error in the first inning, left stranded at third base. Back 
So here's Shaddix with two outs and a runner at first. Misses outside, ball one. Low and away. A nice block there by Davis. If it's not a 5 nothing ball game, I imagine Wasane's going to take off on that one. But Vipers need the base runners right now. 2-0 oh the count. <laughs> right at the knees for call strike. Two balls and one strike. Toss over to first, they got him. So we end the inning, no runs on one hit. No errors, nobody left on base. We play through two and we will go to the third inning. Still down, five to nothing. So five nothing here as we head to the top half of the third inning. Austin Spiels will come back on for his first full inning of work. And he will be facing the seven, eight, nine hitters for Westwood. Don't forget the email is open, Voice of the Vipers, all one word plural, Voice of the Vipers at gmail.com. We will tentatively be back on the air with you Thursday from the Leander ISD tournament as the Vipers take on McCallum at 12.30 and then Flower Mound out of the Dallas area at 3 o'clock from Blue Diamond over at Leander High School. And then Friday broadcast right back here from Benham Field, 10 o'clock in the morning against Leander and eight o'clock at night against Temple. Those are tentative broadcasts, but that is the current plan. As Michael Davis steps in to lead off the second inning, swing and a miss, strike one. In the top of the third, Davis hit by a pitch in the second inning. And up for strike two. Austin Spiel is celebrating his 18th birthday. I remember my 18th birthday, last century. Oh, yeah. And pitch down low, ball one. Actually, that was a joke, but that's right. It was last century. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Ooh, just missed outside of the count, two and two. Two-two pitch. Oh, that looked good, but the umpire says no when the count goes full to Davis. Three balls, two strikes. Got him, swinging a miss, strike three. One away for Jake Jones. Jones and RBI field his choice in the second inning. Steps in here with one out and the base is empty. And swings it a pitch up high and fouls it back, strike one. Spiels with a bit of a funky delivery. Works from the stretch all the time. 
kind of a short windup. And that pitch up high, one ball, one strike. Lifted in the air to shallow right field, and that ball's going back and making a sliding catch out there. Was Cole was saying. That wind but kind of taking the ball away from him. Looked like he was going to hang up, and then it just kind of sunk on him, but he stayed with it for out number two. And Luke Brandis will step in. Lifting the air to center field, drifting over to his right is Peyton Grimm, and he's going to haul it in for a quick, quiet one, two, three inning, just what the doctor ordered. We play through two and a half. We'll go to the bottom of the third, still down five nothing. You're watching Vatican and Piper's baseball on the Vibe Live Network. comes in and sends out Westwood 1-2-3 in the top of the third inning to keep it a 5 nothing ball game. Now it's time for the Viper Bats to go to work and try to trim, cut into this lead a little bit. Top of the order coming up. Shaddock was up at bat when Wasain was picked off to retire the side of the second inning, so he'll step in with a fresh count to lead off the third inning for the Vipers. Pitch up high, ball one, two Shaddox. Unofficially 38 pitches in the first two innings for Ridge Morgan. Pitch count limit 110. Pitch at the lettuce for call strike. One ball, one strike. Lady Vipers leading seven to four on the softball field next door. That game in the fifth inning. All speed stays up high, and the count two and one to Shaddix. High and away, ball three. So Shaddix likely taken here, three balls and a strike. Vipers need some base runners. In there for a strike, and the count goes full. <clears throat> Three balls, two strikes. Sky high fly ball in the short center field. Center fielder Caleb Moore camped out underneath it, and he squeezes it for out number one. And that'll bring up Hudson Lilly. He was hit by a pitch. Plus stranded in second in the first inning. He shows bunt, and he's a good bunter, but he bunts that one foul for strike one. 
Cedar Ridge poured it on. They now lead 12 to nothing over McNeil, still in the fourth inning. Oh, one pitch. Low and away, ball one. One ball, one strike to the Viper. Well, I think he's third baseman now. Sometimes catcher, sometimes second baseman, now playing third base. 1-1 one, one pitch. Joe's bunt again, the pitch up high, 2-1. and one. Kind of like football, he can punt, play quarterback, special teams. Two balls and a strike to Lilly. Skies, this one pretty well hit. Outfield giving chase, but it's going to hang up in the air. And Lane Wood hauls it in for out number two. Now that'll bring up MD Connor with two outs and the base is empty. Connor flew out to right field in the first inning. First pitch to counter, stays up high inside, ball one. One-oh pitch. Inside corner, strike one. One ball, one strike. Ooh, swung and a miss, strike two. Pulled the string on that one. He's ahead of counter now, one and two. High and away, two and two. Two balls, two strikes with two away. Shot foul at the first base side, and the count remains two and two to Connor. Two balls, two strikes, two out here in the third. That ball hit the shallow center field and playing it perfectly was the center field of Caleb Moore. Vibers hit the ball pretty hard all three times but hit it right through the outfield and it'll be a quiet one, two, three inning. We play through three, we will go to the fourth. Still trailing it, three to nothing. You are watching this Jones and Sprouse broadcast of Vanity Vipers baseball on the Vibe Live Network. If you're looking for a new home that's as unique as you are, consider Silverton Custom Homes and Silverton Real Estate. Silverton is a pioneer in the Austin luxury custom home market, celebrating 30 years of building award-winning homes in Austin's most sought-after communities and the surrounding hill country. Each home Silverton builds is as individual as the family that lives there, custom designed to suit their specific lifestyle and budget and set apart by timeless designs and old-fashioned integrity. Silverton Custom Homes is honored to be one of just over 100 builders selected from across the nation as a member of the exclusive Southern Living Custom Builder Program. Visit us online at SilvertonCustomHomes.com to learn more. Silverton Custom Homes, building dreams since 1993. All right, we go to the top of the fourth inning, still trailing at five to nothing. Merle Bertrand here, Rosie Vega, our QA, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast to make sure that we're Staying on the air and looking and sounding as good as we can. Give a shout out to my mom from the great state of Illinois. Number one Viper fan in the state of Illinois. Top of the second inning, Dripping Springs in Austin High tied up one apiece. In what we used to call a K-Mac Cup game, and we had two broadcasts for the same game. Melvin Jones on the call for Dripping Springs. And Josh Willard calling the ball game for the Maroons. It'll be the top of the order to up here for Westwood. Gula, Hallett, and Morgan do up. 
Austin Spiel is on for his second full inning of work. Come in and retired four straight batters thus far. Reset the defense for you. Shaddix, Grimm, and Wissane, the outfield left to right. Hudson Lee now moving over to third where Spielis was. Carter Hubbard still at shortstop and Cash Millar in at second. Where Lilly was. MD Connor over first place. Allen Jordan still behind the plate and here's Spielis going to work against Jackson Gula. And curveball stays high and side ball one. Pitch down low, ball two. Weston with five runs on just one hit. A disastrous second inning that saw the Warriors get three walks and four hit batters. Taken all the way on 2-0. Oh. That pitch paints the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. Bowie leading Anderson 2-0 over at Nelson Field. That's in the top of the third inning. Little flare to the left field. That ball is sinking fast and a diving effort. Unable to come up with it. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Great effort out there by Gavin Shaddix. Just couldn't quite get to it. It'll be a leadoff single for Gula. That'll bring up Drew Hallett. He is 0 for 1 tonight with an RBI walk. Walk with the bases loaded. Nobody out, runner at first. Good pitch, call strike one to the Warrior second baseman. Toss over to first. Mentioned the Vipers playing in the Leander ISC tournament this weekend. After tonight's game, Westwood will head south down to the Dell Valley, take part in the Dell Valley tournament before resuming district play next week against Round Rock. That's a bunt, and it's going to be fielded by Jackson. The only play will be at first. It's a high throw, pulls the runner off the bag, and that'll put runners at first and second with nobody out. The runners are first and second with nobody out for Ridge Morgan. First Viper error of the night. Curveball stays up high for ball one. Morgan has been hit by the pitch twice tonight. Credited with the RBI the second time as it came with the bases loaded. That looked like a good pitch, but the umpire says no when the count goes to 2-0 to Morgan. So two balls, no strikes to the Warrior pitcher. Swing and a miss, pulled the string on that one, two and one the count. This weekend's tournament's the last tournament play, by the way. It'll be district play and a couple of non-district games the rest of the way for the Vipers. Two balls and a strike here to Morgan. Beautiful, off-speed floats in there for called strike two. Two balls, two strikes to Morgan. Two-two pitch from Spielis. Misses low and away, and the count goes full to Morgan. The 
Three balls, two strikes. Low ball four, and the bases are loaded again, but nobody out. So Gula over to third, Hallett up to second base. I would imagine Rupert will come in and run. Rupertus, pardon me, not Rupert, Luke, Luke Rupertus running for Morgan for the third time tonight. Nobody out for Kayla Moore stepping in. Pitch down low, ball one. Moore one for one with a hit by pitch RBI. Time is called. Curveball lifted high in the air to the right side. And that ball is going to be caught. That's a fair ball. The run will score. Great effort. <laughs> Tremendous effort by Cash Millar. Covering a lot of ground at second base. Makes the catch for the out. Be one of the shortest sacrifice flies that you will see. But on the play, Jackson Gula just come in to make it a 6-0 ball game. Uh, John Ramsey will step in. 6 nothing now. One out runners at first and second. Six nothing now, Warriors on top, runners at first and second with one out. Great effort by Millar to make that catch. Pivot the throw, and pretty good move there by Spielers as Millar cutting it back. If you're wondering why Millar doesn't, doesn't let that ball drop because it's going to go foul, it's because it wasn't going to go foul. It was going to be a fair ball regardless. So Millar did the right thing by diving to make the catch, even knowing that the run was going to score. Ooh, and that one hits him. Yet another hit batter. So base is loaded now again with one away for Lane Wood. I got to say, I've never seen anything quite like this. So Hallett up to third, Rupert is at second, Ramsey over at first base, still just one out, and Lane Wood steps in. Lifted foul on a play to the right side. Strike one. Wood one for two on the night. Ground ball right side and out into right field for a base hit. That's going to score at least one. They're going to hold the runner at third. Now they got two runners held up. But it gets two on the infield. Snap throw down the shortstop covering. Everybody's safe. So an RBI single for Wood to right field. Scores Hallett to make it 7 to nothing. Everybody else moves up. Still this one out as Michael Davis will step in. Davis 0 for 2 in the night. Pitch in there for a call, strike one. Oh, one pitch. That one spun over his head, and the count even is up one ball, one strike.
Ooh, that looked like a good pitch. Umpire says it's inside, and the count two and one. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two balls, two strikes with one away. Oh, boy. Count is full to Davis. Three, two pitch with one away. Chopper left side. See if they can turn two. They go on the back for one. The throw to first is high. Throws it into the dugout. Monster off the screen. One run scores. Two run score. They get the force out at second as Wood is retired. Six unassisted for out number two. Rupertus will score. And Ramsey scores. Nine to nothing now your score. Davis aboard on a fielder's choice. Yep. And that'll bring up Jake Jones. And that's a little flare out in the right field. That's going to drop in there for a base hit. And the runner's going to move over from second to third. So runners at the corners here with still just two out. On Jones' a single. And that'll bring up Luke Brandis. Runners at the corners with two outs. Owen Norrell, the runner over at third base for uh, Davis, by the way. Girl ball stays up high, ball one. Brand is the ninth batter to bat in the inning for Westwood. Ground ball, nice play. The throw to first in time. Boy, I tell you what, Hudson Lilly, for as much as the Vipers have struggled on the mound and on defense tonight, Hudson Lilly with a great play right there, the 5 3 put out to retire the side. But four more runs in the inning for Westwood. On one, two, three, four hits. Helped out by a couple of errors. And two runners left on base. We will go to the bottom half of the fourth inning with a lot of work to do down, nine to nothing. Get back to Venom Field here on the campus of Vanderbilt High School. Nine nothing. Vipers on the short end of the score thus far, and they'll be sending up the four, five, and six hitters to try to get something going against Ridge Morgan. It'll be Alan Jordan, Connor Freeman, and Peyton Grimm do up.
And the first pitch in the call, strike one to Jordan. Struck out looking his only other at bat back in the first inning. Swing and a miss. Strike two. O2 pitch. Ripped it fouled on the first base side. Lane Wood, Caleb Moore, Jackson Gould of the outfield left to right. Luke Brandis, John Ramsey, Drew Hallett, and Antonio Martinez the infield third to first. Michael Davis behind the plate and Ridge Morgan on for his fourth inning to work on officially 54 pitches on the night coming into this inning. 0-2 pitch. Slow tapper left side, going to be a tough play. Gobbled up to throw to first, and it is not in time. That one gets away, and Jordan makes a big turn to first, and he's going to head down to second base. Be interesting to see what they score, how they score this one. As Connor Freeman will step in. My guess is I'll rule that an error, but we'll see what they put up here. I'm cheating. I'm watching score changer. Or game changer. I would call it an error, but I'll see. Yep, they rule it an error. Yep. So Jordan's aboard. Probably have a courtesy runner possibly. I didn't, didn't see that as Connor Freeman steps in. He reached out a walk back in the first inning. And Jordan's going to stay and run for himself at second base. And the pitch down low. Ball one. Pitch at the lettuce for call strike. One ball, one strike. Well, there's no run, nine run play in baseball. It's got to get him back one at a time. Fibers still have 12 outs to work with. Pitch misses outside. Two balls and a strike. Swung on, foul tip. Two and two the count to Freeman. The mission of the tournament games coming up this week. The Vipers will take on Stony Point when district play resumes next week. And the district games next week are Tuesday and Wednesday with spring break. So Tuesday night here, Wednesday night up at Round Rock Stony Point. And that one gets away from the catcher, Davis, who actually did a good job keeping it in front of him, but he didn't realize it. And on the play, Jordan's able to move up to third base. The count full now to Freeman. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. Jordan at third. Three two pitch. Swing and a missed strike three. And Freeman is out for out number one. Second strike out of the ball game recorded by Morgan. And that'll bring up Peyton Grimm who flew out to center field back in the first inning. Pitch inside, ball one. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Shows bunt and butts it foul back to the screen. Nice idea. But the count now one and two to Grimm. High and away, ball two. Yeah. 
Ooh. Oh, called strike three. Umpire thought about it for a second and rings up Peyton Grimm for out number two. Nasty looking pitch there from Morgan. Two outs now for Carter Hubbard. Grounded out to shortstop his last at bat. Jordan still standing in third base, but now two away. High and away, ball one. Misses high and away. Oh boy, oh boy. Same spot as the last one. This one the umpire calls a strike. One ball, one strike. Didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to make sure. Two and one the count. Two one pitch. Popped up left side. See if the ballpark is going to hold it. It will not. It goes out of play. And the count two and two now to the Viper shortstop. Now, though, that ball gets away. They got to plate the plate, and the throw is not in time, and Jordan comes in with a run. So the Vipers are on the board. And the count three and two to Hubbard. Base is empty now with two outs. And they're called strike three. So Ridge Morgan retires the side. But the Vipers do get a gift run on the air. So one run on no hits, one air, nobody left on base. We have played through four. We will go to the fifth. New score, nine to one. And a new pitcher in the ball game here. Looks like MD Connor is going to come in. And pitch will be the fourth Viper pitcher of the night. So we'll see what other, who's going to take over Connor. It looks like Connor Freeman's going to move over to first base. And Spielis goes back to third where he started the ball game. And we'll see. Who has the middle infield positions if Hudson Lilly is out there? Yeah, Lilly moved over to second base again. All right, so if I have it right, the outfield remains the same, thank God. Gavin Shaddock, Peyton Grimm, and Cole was saying the outfield left to right. Austin Spiel is back at third. Carter Hubbard remains at short. Hudson Lilly back over at second base. Connor Freeman in at first base. Alan Jordan remains behind the plate. And MD Connor comes in to pitch here in this fifth inning. Comes in with a record of 0 and 1, seven innings pitch. Giving up six hits, two runs, both of them earned. He struck out five, walked five, has an ERA of 2.00 and a save on the season. And it'll be the top of the order to up. Jackson Gula led off that four run uprising in the fourth inning with a single. And pitch high over his head, ball one. Time is called. Got a little dust in the eye, it looks like.
Pitch misses low and away. Ball one, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Gula. Not missing by much, but the count is 3-0 and oh to Gula. Taken all the way, and that's in there for a strike. Three balls and one strike. Good job battling back to work the count full. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Lifted in the air, left side. Wind is blowing it, and it's going to get out of the reach of Gavin Shaddix. Three two pitch. Lifted in the air to the left field line. That is slicing foul. So be pitching number eight coming here to Gula. The pitch from Connor. Tapper right back to the mound over his head. Coming on is Lily. Gobbles it up and fires it over to first base. Hudson and Lily. The human vacuum cleaner one away. Let her bring up Drew Hallad. Check something here. Not just the second time tonight the Vipers have got the leadoff batter out of Westwood. Hallett takes the first pitch down low, ball one. Hallett reached base twice, he's 0 for 2. RBI walk. That's in the first strike, one ball, one strike. Reach on an error and scored last inning. Nine runs, six hits, two errors for Westwood. One run, one hit, two errors for the Vipers. That pitch stays a little high, two and one. The story of the night, five walks and I think five hit batters by Viper pitching. Two, one pitch. Fouls straight back and the count two and two. Two-two pitch. Stays up high and the count goes full to Hallad. The three-two. Just missed inside, ball four. First walk surrendered by Connor. That'll put Hallett aboard and lead bring up Ridge Morgan. Morgan has walked once and been hit by the pitch twice tonight. He's been on base all three times. No official at bats on the night. Swing and a miss. Vicious pitch there by Connor. Morgan had time to swing at that one twice. Strike one. Slap foul. Oh, nicely done. They're going to go to short to get the runner. That's a Good play and not in time to get the double play, but a great play there by Connor Freeman. Who hasn't seen a lot of action at first base, but he stabbed that one and fired it to Carter Hubbard to get the lead runner. Nice play by Connor Freeman. One six force for out number two. Morgan was able to beat the throw and permit the double play, which would have been spectacular. So Rupert is back in to run for Morgan, but they're now two away. And Caleb Moore takes the first pitch for ball one. Two outs, runner at first.
Brushes him off the plate. The pitch stays inside, 2-0. Oh. Misses outside, ball three. Three balls, no strikes, tossed over to first. Real pitch. High and side, ball four will be the second walk of the inning. So more aboard at first. Rupert just moves up to second base, and that'll bring up John Ramsey, the shortstop. He has also been on base all three times tonight. Walked and hit twice. Rupert is at second base running for Morgan. Moore aboard at first base. Two outs for Ramsey. And time is called. Good pitch inside corner for call strike one. They've gone final at McNeil, Cedar Ridge, 15 to nothing in five innings. Oh, one pitch. Kind of looks the runner back in at second base. A one pitch. There goes the runner and hits him. Man, oh man. Every Viper pitcher tonight has struggled with control. So Rupert is at third, Moore up to second. Ramsey aboard at first with two outs. And Lane Wood will step in. Wood two for three on the night with a couple of RBIs. Still no damage done here. Swing and a miss, strike one. And now time is called. Oh, one pitch. Swung on foul tip, and NB Connor is one strike away from getting out of a mess of his own making here with no damage done. O2 oh, pitch. Sky high fly ball, right field. And coming in and making the catch in right field is Cole was saying to retire the side. So Westwood threatens here in the fifth inning. But they don't punch anybody across. No runs on, no hits, no errors. Three runners left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Getting some offense down 9-1. to one. Bandy Good Vipers baseball on Vipe Live.
right, here we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning for the Vipers. It'll be eight, nine, and one hitters due up. Austin Spielis, Cole was saying, and then back to the top of the order we go. Vipers have nine outs to make up eight runs. And the first pitch misses outside on the way. Ball one to Spiel. Is 0 for 1. Grounded out to second. His only other at bat. That pitch misses down low. 2 and 0. 74 pitches unofficially coming into this inning for Ridge Morgan, who's worked the distance, scattered just the two hits for Vandegrift. That's in there for a strike. 2 and 1. Two one pitch, line shot and oh, knocked down by the shortstop. He can't find it and spills to the board. This will be an interesting call. This is birthday. Give him a hit. As Cole Wasain will step in. Was saying an infield single, the only Viper hit of the night thus far. Shows bunt and gets it down. And they're going to look the runner over to second, but they get the four side anyway. They did, they did give Spielis the hit, so. Infield single for Spielis, and then was saying with the bunt. Two three sacrifice, one away, moves Spielis up to second base, back to the top of the order. We go to Gavin Shaddix with one out now. Pitch in there for call strike one to Gavin Shaddix. Shaddix 0 for 2 did reach out an error in the first inning. Low and away. One ball, one strike to the Viper left fielder. At the lettuce for a strike. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> Tap foul. The count remains one and two. One ball, two strikes to Shaddix. Spiels at second base with one out here. Foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. One two pitch on its way. Brushes the back and the count goes two and two. Good eye there. The pitch low in the dirt and the count goes full. So Shaddix works the count full here. Three balls, two strikes. There's activity in the Warrior bullpen down there. Tapper left side. They got to play a third if they choose to make it. They don't. They go to first and get the sure out. So it'll be a 6 3 put out to retire Shaddix. And Spielis moves over to third base, but now two outs. And Hudson Lilly will step in. 
Lily 0 for 1, flew out to left, hit by a pitch in the first inning. Has played a spectacular game on defense tonight. Trying to get a two out RBI here and bring the second Viper run into the night. Pitches the lettuce for call strike one. That one bends in there for a strike and the count quickly 0-2 to the Viper second baseman. Just missed off the plate, the count one and two. One, two pitch. Swing and a missed strike three. And Lily is out on strikes. Fifth strikeout of the night recorded by Ridge Morgan. And the Vipers threat is over here in the fifth inning. So no runs, one hit, nowhere is one more to left on base. We have played through five. We will go to the top half of the sixth inning here from Benham Field. Still 9-1 in favor of Westwood. And that'll give you a chance to thank our Grand Slam sponsor once again, Jones and Spross, along with our home run sponsors, Symbio, Wayne Weigel State Farm, Austin Sports Medicine, Alicia Michaud Real Estate, and Silverton Custom Homes, and our double play sponsor, Sports Clips. Thank you to all those good folks for making it possible for us to be here with you on this Tuesday evening. And what's with us? Westwood will send up these seven, eight, and nine hitters here in the sixth inning. against M.D. Connor on for his second full inning of work. It'll be Michael Davis, Jake Jones, and Luke Brandeis due up. So here's Michael Davis stepping in to lead it off. And we got a pinch hitter stepping in. This is Jacob Wright batting for Davis. And that pitch misses inside the count two and zero. Oh. Two balls, no strikes, and that pitch stays inside of the count three and oh. Three oh pitch. That one in there for a strike, three balls in a strike to right. Lost in ball four. Walk number seven given up by Viper pitching tonight. That'll bring up Jake Jones. Jones, an RBI fielder's choice in the second and flew out to right field in the third inning. Pitch up high, ball one. The 
Stays inside again in the count, 2-0. Oh. Two balls, no strikes to Jones. Oh, man. The count, 3-0. and oh. They're not missing by much. Taking all the way, and that pitch in there for a strike, three and one. So second straight batter that counters falling behind three and oh, then goes to three and one. Let's see how this one works out. Three one pitch. In there for call strike two, and the count goes full. Right running at first base. But off the inning with the walk. Three balls and two strikes to counter. Ground ball left side, knocked out over the glove. Well, Spielis out in the left field. That's gonna, a hot shot single puts runners at first and second for Luke Brandis. So right at second, and Jones at first, still nobody out. Brandis shows bunt and gets it down in front of the plate. Well done. Only play will be at first. Connor takes the only out he can get. So a well done sacrifice there by Brandis. 1-3 sacrifice moves both runners up, one away. And back to the top of the order we go. Two Jackson Gula with one out. Now, if two runs come in here in this sixth inning, the Vipers would have to score on the bottom of the sixth to keep the game alive. And that ball gets back to the screen. They got a plate to plate. Not going to be in time, and the run comes in. So Wright scores on the wild pitch to make it now 10-1. to one. Jones moves up to third base. One ball, no strikes to Gula. Pitch. In that the knees will call strike. One ball, one strike. One one pitch. Swung out, lifted foul out of play to the left. One ball and two strikes. One, two, pitch. Curveball, bends. Oh, that was a nice looking pitch, but it stayed up a little high, says the umpire. On the count, two and two. Two, two, pitch. Oh! This umpire's just not giving them anything close. Three and two the count. Connor working quickly. Ripped butt, fouled on the first base side, just barely. Connor working from the line, the three two pitch with one away. Down low ball four, runners at the corners. And that'll bring up Drew Hallad. So Hallad steps in. And give a shout out to his dad, Southwestern University running back coach, Kurt Hallad, who came in and said hello a moment ago. Had the pleasure of calling Pirates football again this fall. 
didn't make the connection until he came in to say hi. Toss over the first runner back. One ball, no strikes, runners at the corners, just one out, and now base is loaded. And the epidemic continues here at Venom Field. So base is loaded, one out for Ridge Morgan. The ice baths at Westwood High School are going to be working overtime tonight. I think that was the seventh or eighth hit batter of the night. All four Viper pitchers have hit at least one batter. And we're going to have another pitching change. So a timeout in the field. We'll find out who that is and take it with them. You're watching the Jones' Cross broadcast of Vanica Viper's baseball here on the Viper Live Network. New pitcher for the Viper, number 10, Andres Fernandez, fifth Banneker pitcher of the night. He comes in making his fourth appearance of the year, a record of 1-0. Six innings pitched thus far, giving up five hits and two runs, both of them earned. He has struck out seven and walked two with an ERA of 2.33. He inherits a base-loaded situation with just one out. And again, if one run comes across here, we'd be in a 10-run situation. The Vipers would have to score at least one more run in the bottom of the sixth inning to keep the game alive. Jones is at third. Gula is at second. Hallett is at first base. Just one out, and Ridge Morgan will step in. I've got seven hit by pitches on the night unofficially. As Morgan steps in, he's been on the recipient in receiving end of two of those. And Andres Fernandez trying to keep this game alive. Pitch way up high, ball one. One-oh pitch. Lifted in the air to the right side, out of play. One ball, one strike. One, one pitch with one away. Just missed outside, two and one. Lifted it high in the air, left side. Everybody giving chase, it's in foul territory, and was it caught? It was caught, great effort out there. I think home plate umpire made the call, yeah. Great effort out there by Gavin Shaddix to haul it in for out number two. But a sacrifice fly does score uh, Jake Jones to make it 11 to 1. So to us now, both other runners move up to second and third in an 11 to 1 ball game. 
And that ball slapped out in the right field for a base hit. And that's going to score Gula and they're going to hold Hallett at third. Now 12-1 to 1 on the RBI single from Caleb Moore. And that'll bring up John Ramsey. Now 12-1 to 1 your score with two outs. Two outs, runner at third. Pitch misses inside, ball one. This will be a game that the Vipers want to flush as soon as the final out is recorded. And then for a strike, one ball, one strike. And I guarantee you Thursday night or Thursday afternoon cannot get here fast enough. Sky high fly ball into center field. Drifting back is Peyton Grimm, and he's going to haul it in for out number one. But the Vipers now trail by 11 as we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. They've got to score at least two runs to keep the game alive. In the inning for Westwood, two runs, three runs, pardon me. One, I think two hits, and one, one runner left on base. So we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's like a new pitcher in for Westwood. Yes, number seven is Cooper Williamson, the new pitcher for Westwood. Nice job done by Ridge Morgan. So Ridge Morgan's night is done. He gave up just the one run on two hits. Struck out five, walked just one. And Cooper Williamson will come in and face the three, four, and five hitters for Vandegrift. He will be facing MD Connor, Allen Jordan, and Connor Freeman. It's that time of game where you forget about the score and just work on stuff. Connor's flown out to right, flown out to center. And he will step in to lead off the Viper half of the sixth inning. Curveball spins in there across the inside corner, strike one. That one's in there for a strike, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. Just missed high and away, 1 and 2. And time is called. One two pitch. That ball ripped in the right field for a base hit. It might get to the wall. No getting over to it quickly and cutting it off. 
was Gula. So a loud single from MD Connor to lead off the sixth inning. Now that'll bring up Alan Jordan, who's 0 for 2 on the night. Did reach on an error in the fourth inning and score the Vipers' only run of the game. Bottom of the sixth inning, Bowie 5, Anderson nothing. Top of the sixth inning, Dripping Springs 2, Austin High 1. That ball hit hard to right center field, pretty well tagged, and getting over and making the catch was the right fielder, Gula. That ball looked like trouble when it left the bat, but it really held up. And Jordan is out for out number one. That'll bring up Connor Freeman. Freeman 0 for 1 with a walk in the first inning. And the first strike, strike one. Oh, one pitch. Curveball bends, but not enough. Brushes him off the plate, and the county was up one to one. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes to Freeman. I'll tip, just got a piece of it to hang alive. The count remains one and two to Freeman. Oh, knocked down. They're gonna go to short for one and that ball is in time. Had to wait for the umpire. A good hard slide there by MD Connor. Thought it may have jarred the ball loose. Nice play by Williamson. Spears that one, took his time, got the lead runner for the force out. Freeman reaches on a fielder's choice. Now two outs. Runner at first for Peyton Grimm. Vipers down to their final out here, down by 11. And the cross strike one. That was a nice play by Williamson. That ball was a shot. Could have gone through very easily. Oh, lays off that pitch. Should have been a ball, but it wasn't. Called the strike, and the count 0-2. Little too far outside even for that guy. One and two the count. One ball, two strikes. Freeman running at first base with two outs. Misses down low, and the count even is up two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Vipers down to the final strike here. High and away, and the count goes full. Carter Hubbard on deck. If Grimm can keep the game alive. In the call, strike three, and that's the ball game. So that will do it. 12 to one, your final score in six innings. As Westwood Warriors win the district opener against the Vanderbilt Vipers. We'll take a quick break, get the numbers put together, and be right back. You are watching the Jones and Sprouse broadcast of Vanderbilt Vipers baseball on the Vipe Live Network. 
If you're looking for a new home that's as unique as you are, consider Silverton Custom Homes and Silverton Real Estate. Silverton is a pioneer in the Austin luxury custom home market, celebrating 30 years of building award-winning homes in Austin's most sought-after communities and the surrounding hill country. Each home Silverton builds is as individual as the family that lives there, custom designed to suit their specific lifestyle and budget and set apart by timeless designs and old-fashioned integrity. Silverton Custom Homes is honored to be one of just over 100 builders selected from across the nation as a member of the exclusive Southern Living Custom Builder Program. Visit us online at SilvertonCustomHomes.com to learn more. Silverton Custom Homes, building dreams since 1993. And we welcome you back to Benham Field. 12 to 1, the final score. The Vanagon Pipers fall tonight to the Westwood Warriors in the district opener. Here are the unhappy numbers. First four, Westwood, 12 runs on eight hits, two errors. A fine pitching performance by Ridge Morgan to get the win for the Warriors. For the Vanagon Pipers, one run on three hits, two errors. And the losing pitcher will be Connor Freeman. The good news is it only counts as one loss. 12 to 1, the final score. The Vipers will be back in action in the Lander ISD tournament on Thursday, and we are tentatively planning to bring those games to you uh, Thursday. I think it's at 12.30, and I got the times here. Let's see. Yeah, 12. That's Friday. Let's go back up here to my schedule. Yeah, 12.30 against McCallum, and then 3 o'clock against Flower Mound from the Blue Diamond at Leandra High School. That's a tentative uh, plan to be on the air uh, for those two tournament games and then back again on Friday. Then we'll see what Saturday brings. And of course, we will for sure be back for the district contest next Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday night at home against Stony Point and then Wednesday night against at Stony Point all at about 7 o'clock here on the Vibe Live Network. So, on behalf of our QA this evening, Rosie Baker, thank you to her for making sure that we are staying on the air and looking and sounding as good as we possibly can. All of our sponsors are Grand Slam sponsor, Jones and Spross. Our home run sponsor, Symbio. Wayne Weigel with State Farm. Austin Sports Medicine. Alicia Michaud Real Estate. And Silverton Custom Homes, along with the Sports Clips, our double play sponsors. Thanks to Rosie Baker, our technical director, Suna Vincott, and everyone from Bite Media. My name is Merle Bertrand, signing out. Your final score, the Bandicoot Pirates have fallen tonight to the Western Warriors by a final score of 12 to 1. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you next time for more Viper Baseball right here on Bite Live. Get out, everybody. Hey.